Hi, everybody. I am doing a live stream today where I've gotten some questions from tested patrons about shop infrastructure, one of my favorite subjects, uh, and actually just completed a shop infrastructure uh, build yesterday. Um, for those of you wondering why there haven't been a lot of postings of one-day builds, it's because I've been concentrating for the last month and a half on a big build uh, of some spacesuits. All those videos are going up very soon. In fact, uh, it begins with a pretty amazing video we're going to drop in the next uh, 24 hours, give or take. Um, but that has been uh, an all-absorbing project for the last couple of months at least. So that's why you've seen a sort of diminished output, but I'm, I'm back, baby. I'm back in the shop and starting to do some more uh, specifically titular one day builds that actually happen within a day or so. But today I have dusted off my uh, Eagle Moss Ecto-1. Uh, we have completed much of the engine compartment and the chassis thus far, by the way, we were at Ghost Corps recently on the Sony lot where Jason and Ivan Reitman have their offices and where all the Ghostbusters goodness is produced out of. And uh, they had a completed Eagle Moss Ecto-1. Uh, it was a prototype. Of, of course they would be having a prototype, but the size of it is incredible. It is, it's so awesome to see it all up. And it's actually, like I know I did a bunch of weathering of the engine bay while I was assembling it. I'm going to be layering in more weathering before I start to bolt stuff together because the one thing I thought of their prototype was that it was way too clean. Like, the Ecto-1 has got to be beaten up. It's got to have some real rust. Uh, so, I've dusted off the Eagle Moss project. I am going now. I am on issue number 12, step one, uh, stage 42, and I am doing some dashboard parts. And I, I'm also, like, I got to say, it's really nice to to again, wrap my head around this project for the first time in months. Uh, I have, e e uh, specifically Eagle Moss project management is a particular area I'm getting better and better at. For instance, every time I get a new kit, I immediately assemble a screw and nut uh, assortment tray that helps sort out all the, all the tiny little pieces of hardware. Uh, and then there's also making sure you can put it in so you know what stage you're at when you pick it up months later. It only took me about five minutes to, to reorient my brain on this. Uh, so we're putting on the antenna. The antenna, all right. And that's one part of the antenna. That looks like another part. There is a, yep. And I need a G. Oh, oh, there's two pieces here. Okay. So there's that, and that drops in there, and that is a BP. P, I've realized, stands for plastic. M stands for metal. I, I'm a little, I, I'm a little, um, I feel a little dumb that it took me a long time to figure that out. But then that is not an uncommon state for me. G, uh, GP, G. One, and then I'll need four of those for attachment to the dashboard. Two, one, two, three, four. Okay, uh, so I'm going to get one on my Phillips here. Toss it up through there. Yes, and then. You know, I learn a lot about handling small parts just by watching some watchmaking and repairing YouTube videos. Watching the, I mean, because every part that a watchmaker deals with is like sneeze and it's gone. So watching how those folks do things like hold tiny screws onto the end of their screwdrivers and, you know, use both magnetized and specifically demagnetized tools in order to properly manage their parts. It's really neat. Okay, uh, that's the underside. This is the overside. That is that part. So here we go. God, most of this has to happen with my glasses off because so nearsighted. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Yep, yep. I may paint this later. I may do some more painting of this thing later. Oh, lovely. Um, 
There's four screws that hold this on. I hold to the axiom, don't tighten any of the screws. When you're doing multiple screws for a single thing, you don't tighten any until they've all been started. Until all the threads have started. That could be a t-shirt. I mean, a very esoteric maker t-shirt. <laughs> Right, anyone who asks about it, it engenders like an entirely long conversation, which is, I don't know, that could be a good thing, that could be a bad thing. Okay, they're all started, tighten them all down and move on to step two. Step two. Okay, lovely. Uh, ooh, the switch, right, the switch plate. Um, so that is, oh, do they really put labels on these? I can't even read this. Hold on just a second. Hold on. Uh, let's see here. I believe I did a tool tip about these. Um, there we go. Wow. This is really funny. Um, they've gone to the trouble of putting labels on. Hold on, I need one more magnifier. Oh. I really want to read these. Oh, no, that's not the right one. Hold on. Oh, there they are. I've done a tool tip on these magnifiers. It's really, really hard to beat these head mounted magnifiers. I've bought Zeiss, expensive Zeiss surgeon lenses and for model making, I found these to be better. Nope, trashing the Zeiss, they're beautiful, but they were unnecessary considering how much magnification this thing yields. Here we go. Okay, now, we, now we're in business, now we can see. Riddle bar, poodle bar, topat, blitz, top. Yep. So they've gone to the trouble to actually put labels, but they're all nonsense. I, for some reason, I really appreciate that. <laughs> okay. Thanks for that diversion. Now we're going to put these guys in. Do they all just pop in? Carefully remove each switch from the sprue and spread the longer pin at the end of the switches into the eight holes of the switch panel. You may find it easier using tweezers for this. Yes, I will. Um, okay, so. One. Oh my God, I'm gonna sneeze and lose these. Three. Four. The questions today about shop infrastructure from tested patrons are really, really great. In fact, there's one I'm going to answer first, and it's from an, apart an, an apartment dweller. Um, and, you know, covering how to do making when you live in a small space is actually an excellent question, and it's one that um, we've all had to deal with. And so I'm really glad to get a chance to speak to it. Um, I've had shops in, you know, as small as a six by eight square foot space. Um, and I've had shops as big as a couple thousand square feet like this one. Well, <laughs> I have a total of a couple thousand square feet. I'm utilizing for my shop about 500, 450, which frankly is just not enough. Um, I'm starting to think that I may have to, I, I'm actually starting to ponder to get rid of my pool table, to be fair. Um, come on, why aren't you behaving? Uh, because I'm really not playing a lot of pool and I think I could use the extra space. I'm debating on it. I've had this table for so long now, almost 10 years. Um, but yeah, apartment dwelling where you have landlords and all of that, it's non-trivial. Uh, and landlords get uchi when they see you building stuff. Mine always did. <laughs> it certainly did. Okay. Got the switches. Woo. That is really pretty. And am I right, Eagle Moss, that 
these switches are all at slightly different heights as if some of them are switched and some of them are not. I find that really beautiful. Okay, BP, two BP screws. One and two. And these go uh, on the underside facing outwards here. Right? Yeah, is that it? Yeah, it is. Okay. Let's get the the BP. Oh, you know what? This so this is I think I have one more issue to build with this and then I need some more from Eagle Moss because seeing the real thing at uh, Ghost Core was very exciting. Did I just lose a screw? Oh, nope, there it is. Um, seeing the completed one was really exciting and it made me want to um, barrel forward with this one. Okay, the switches are in. Yeah, yeah. What the, wait, 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 wait. Okay, yeah, I guess it is. Ah, yeah, it does have a slant to it, okay. Now I need two EP screws, that is one and two. Oh, you cannot have enough tweezer man tweezers in your house. Uh, let's see, this is the fuel gauge and this goes, yep. Oh man, I cannot wait to do some high detailing of these gauges in this dashboard once it's all assembled. That is going to be very, very lovely. Excellent. Um, and just a couple more steps and we'll be finished here with this step. Okay, so the fuel gauge is in. Now it's time for the little doohickey battery indicator that goes in with an EP screw and that's that thing and we'll get let's see here where does this one go yeah it goes there ah oh. <clears throat> okay now I think oh no there's one more piece here Finally, the emergency brake, and that looks like that, no. Wait a second, wait a second. That's not the emergency brake. Finally, for the emergency, 42H. What does 42H look like? It looks, no, and sorry, it goes, yeah, it sits right there. So do I have it somewhere else? Oh, wait, no, I don't. That's not it, that's not it, that's not it. Those are done. Um, okay, wait a second. I may have to. That part seems to be missing somewhat. So uh, I'm going to continue on with the assembly of the upper and lower dashboards. And for those, I need three LP screws. And then I will worry about the emergency brake a little later. Wow, I only have three LP screws. Uh, it's clearly. And then with that. Hmm. Okay. Um, so let's see here. How does this work? That goes like that, and that goes like that. And then these come in like this. 
Aha, I see what I am missing. I see, no, no, no. Oh, that goes in there, right? And then I am just a tad confused because I think I've missed a couple steps, but I believe I can still do an assembly on this and it will, oh man, that's gonna be so pretty. Okay, let's get this going in here. And that comes back, that comes back. Right, those are actual switches, amazing. Um, and we'll get this going. Oh. Aha, I see, right, that little horn has to go, oh, oh okay. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Yes. Aha, uh -huh. okay, I see what your problem was. That's it. Great. Oh, wow, that was everything, that little bit of a doohickey I just pulled to the side. Okay. Dry fitting and putting in the first of three screws. There goes one. Still looks good. There goes the other outside one. And lastly, lastly, through a hogshead of real fire. Um, excellent. There we go. That is the dashboard. Oh, this guy. Oh, I see what happened to that. It broke off is what happened to that. Okay, so I just have to uh, pop that out and fix that. All right, I've got a couple of little doohickeys here that uh, still need some assembly. Is that the emergency brake? You know what? I think that is. Oh, it is. It's just that they've shown it in such forced perspective. I was uh, didn't realize what I was looking at. Excellent. Okay, I'm not missing a part. I was like, that thing seems way too big to be the thing that they're showing me. But of course, it's a pedal e-brake. Like, oh, come on. Okay, I'm going to get this one last thing in, and then we are good and finished with this step and ready to move on to the next one. Come on, that's it, almost there. Oh yeah, there we go. Ah, well, like I hope that was, um, <clears throat> I hope that satisfied your, your physical Bob, your three-dimensional Bob Ross that uh, sometimes happens here in my cave. Um, there is the beautiful dashboard of our Ecto-1. Uh, we only have one camera, right? Oh, we can do it on this one? Here, let's take a close-up. Yeah. Really pretty. This is high-tech we've got going on here. All right. <laughs>